Alright, let's talk about ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. When I talk about ulcerative colitis, um, so the difference between the two would be ulcerative colitis affects only the colon, and it says it right in the name, colitis. Crohn's disease, on the other hand, can affect the entire GI system. So, looking over here, you can see it's just the large intestine, also known as the colon, uh, particularly the sigmoid and beyond, and Crohn's disease can affect anywhere in the GI system. So, ulcerative colitis would be have ulcerations, or just think of the stomach ulcer, little pocketing and holes and damage to the lining of the colon, and Crohn's disease will typically be like scarring and narrowing of uh, whatever bowel or esophagus or where it happens to be. So risk factors for both include genetics. Um, with ulcerative colitis, it's more common in Caucasians, and with Crohn's disease, use smoking can be a risk factor. So there, uh, the difference between the signs and the symptoms. Crohn's disease over here, it could have it could have pain really anywhere in the GI system. And the pain could be, you know, when the food is traveling through the um, scarred site, it can, it's going to feel pain, and then once it passes, the pain will go away. And it may affect several different layers in the bowel. So, say, you know, it may hurt and then stop hurting, and then it goes through another section and then start hurting again and then stop hurting. Um, whereas ulcerative colitis, typically it's that left lower quadrant pain because it's typically in the sigmoid colon, which is on the left lower side. Uh, as far as stools, there's going to be diarrhea in both, both ulcerative colitis. There's going to be 15 to 20 loose stools. And with Crohn's disease, um, not quite so much. And uh, one way you can maybe remember the ulcerative colitis is more is the colon is, it plays the role of uh, taking fluid out of the stool and making it hard and formed. Well, if the colon is all messed up, then it's not able to pull a liquid out and they're going to be constantly having those loose stools. In uh, both, however, the stools are going to have, or could have, a blood in there because, you know, ulcerative colitis, you got ulcerations here, you got scarred away tissue, so you could have uh, occult blood in the GI system and mucus. Um, and in both, you could have fever just because there's a lot of inflammation going on in the body. So as far as diagnosis, diagnosis the same, you look at their symptoms, and then you go ahead and the doctor could do a CT or an x-ray, and that's where they'll see, hey, there's something wrong with the GI system. After that, they could go ahead and do a colonoscopy or a sigmoidoscopy where they'll actually scope, take a, take a scope, go up through the anus, and they'll take a look at, at what it actually looks like, maybe take some samples, make sure it's not cancer. Or they could do a barium enema. In this case, they'll do an enema to the patient where they'll inject uh, radioactive dyes, and then they can do an x-ray, and they can get really good pictures of the bowels. So treatment, well ulcerative colitis is only in the colon, so if you remove the colon, there's nothing left to ulcerate. So you can do a colectomy. This is where they'll actually remove the colon, the large intestine, and the patient is going to have an ostomy. And what this is, is it's a device, basically instead of using the anus for your uh, bowel movements, it's just going to go through a pouch um, that is attached to the patient's body. So basically the, whatever is left is going to, instead of going to the anus, it's going to be ducted to an artificial opening to the outside of the skin on the abdomen. With Crohn's disease, um, if you remove the, the colon, well, the rest of the GI system can still ulcerate or, or become uh, sh scarred. So really, it's only when it's really necessary, they'll go in uh, sometimes laparoscopically and just fix the scarred tissues or, uh, or get rid of the scarred tissues and reconnect the, the spots that are still good. So with both these patients, they're having problems with their GI system, and so they're having malabsorption issues. And so you'll see signs and symptoms. They could have weight loss and low potassium, low magnesium, and low energy. And so these patients need vitamins and a good diet. So you want to tell both these patients to have high calorie, high protein diet. You want to be low in fiber because you don't want a bunch of fiber roughening up the damaged tissues. And they're going to need uh, vitamin supplements. Um, you also want to avoid alcohol and caffeine in the diet because that will roughen up and, and get the bowels moving extra. These patients also benefit from antidiarrheal medicines, maybe slow down their diarrhea. And then anti-inflammatory uh, medicines such as steroids and immunosuppressants will help keep the Crohn's and ulcerative colitis under check. So this is ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's disease.